Hey physics students, um, I'm here, Miss Miller, to give you your final lecture for the gravitation unit on projectile motion. I'm here on behalf of the four physics B teachers, so Dr. A, Mr. Johnson, and Miss Jones. Um, so projectile motion. Um, projectile motion is any time we have an object that's moving and the only force acting on that object is the gravitational force. So that could be a variety of things. That could be just a falling object like this ball. Um, in that case, as soon as my hand releases um, itself from the ball and the ball falls, the only force acting on the ball is the gravitational force. We don't usually think about just a linear motion um, object, meaning it's just moving straight down as being a projectile. But based on the definition of a projectile, that would um, only have the gravitational force acting on it and therefore be a projectile. However, the forces acting on this ball in free fall are exactly the same as the forces acting on the ball when... I shoot it up in the air like that. Let me do that one more time so that we have a little bit of a lower trajectory. So as soon as my hand releases the ball in that case, going up like this, as soon as my, my hand is off of the ball, the only force acting on the ball is the gravitational force. So that would be kind of more of a classic projectile where you think about something being projected and moving out through space. And what's a little bit unique about this chapter versus other chapters that we've done is that now we have an object that's moving in two dimensions. So when I've already pushed this ball in, I'm going to kind of use this hand, at an angle um, like this, then I've gotten the ball moving both to, let's see, based on what you're viewing, to the right and also up. So... That would be moving in two dimensions because it's moving to the right. It's moving along like this X, Y, Z axis, or sorry, X axis. And that's also moving up and down um, along the Y axis. So the two dimensional motion there is that it's moving horizontally and also vertically. So I'm gonna write down the definition of a projectile really quickly. Now we're going to talk about a couple more things. All right, so a projectile is any force in, upon which the only force is the gravitational force. One of the demonstrations that you watched when you were doing the experiments was when we have a simultaneous drop and launched ball. So unfortunately, I don't have that device with me here, but what that looks like is it's um, a little wood block that has a spring-loaded mechanism that will project or shoot a ball perfectly horizontal out from the um, from where it's positioned, and then at the same time as it shoots a ball out, it drops one straight down. And when you observe that video in slow motion, what you see is you have the ball right here, and I'm going to label that one dropped. And then you have the ball right here, and I'm going to label that one launched. What you observed is that they fall vertically in an identical manner. So I'm going to draw kind of the motion map of what we would see for these two objects. So initially, the dropped ball falls just a little bit, and then it falls by more the next second and more the next second because it's speeding up and accelerating to the earth as it falls here. The launch ball is going to move to the right because it already had a force acting on it that gave it some initial velocity moving to the right. So in the first, this is time zero. This would be the first second. In the first second, it's moved to the right, and it's also dropped by a bit. In the next second, it's again moved to the right, but it's also dropped by more. And then in the next second, it's moved to the right, but dropped by more. And then moved to the right, but dropped by more. So we see 
this motion, which here, um, let me fix this a little bit. I'm not perfect here because um, I don't have a grid line system where I can really make sure I'm moving the same distance. But what this should look like is it should have somewhat of a parabolic shape. Just like when um, you shoot a ball like that, and the shape that the ball takes is a parabola, um, this would be like half of a parabola um, where we have our vertex of the parabola just at the very top, and then it's um, opening down. All right, so a couple of things to point out about this dropped and launched ball. First thing I already said is that their vertical motion is actually identical. So if we look at on this y-axis, they both start from the exact same vertical position in their distance above the ground every second. So if I'm measuring if this is a ground, the distance above the ground is the exact same for each ball every second. The only thing that's different is that the launch ball is also making um, some horizontal progress. And what's, what I should have been a little bit more accurate about here is that the horizontal distance that the ball travels every second is exactly the same. So what I'm going to add to this are the velocity vectors that show the velocity moving horizontally for each of these and vertically. So I'll do the vertical first in blue. So um, to show the velocity initially, initially this ball was moving slowly. And then in the next second, it sped up, so its velocity arrow is longer and longer and longer. And then this one would, let's just say that that is the ground. So this is when it hits the floor. So speeding up vertically, the dropped ball doesn't have any horizontal velocity. It would just be zero, so there's no horizontal vectors to draw here. And I'm going to label blue is VY. So V for velocity, Y to represent the vertical velocity. On the launched ball, in order to draw the vertical velocity vectors, I'm just drawing the difference from where the initial dot was to where the final dot was, but only in the vertical direction. So that would be just here, because I'm only looking at this difference. And now I'm looking at this difference, so here. So again, one thing we're noticing is that these vectors at each consecutive time point on both the dropped and the launch ball are identical. And for the launch ball, it also has a horizontal velocity. And I'm going to add these congruency marks because the horizontal velocity is constant. It does not change. So whatever velocity the ball achieved when the force was acting on it by having this um, lever that pushes on the launch ball, getting it to go from zero to some velocity. So let's say it was going two meters per second at the moment that it was launched it's going to have that same horizontal velocity the entire time. And I'm going to add over here that in red I'm showing Vx, so x standing for horizontal velocity. And then um, one other thing that comes up in this chapter is this idea of breaking a velocity vector into its horizontal and vertical components. Um, so I'm going to add that over here. So vector components just mean that you have any vector or any push, let's say, let's say it's a force that's acting at an angle. So when I have this ball, and if I'm going to shoot a free throw with a volleyball, apparently, um, I'm shooting that ball both up and also to the left now. So I'm going to exert a force that acts this direction when I shoot that ball. 
And so I'm just going to draw that force here. So I exerted a diagonal force on the ball. Um, the vector components break up any diagonal force into the amount of the force that's actually pushing the ball to the left and the amount of force that's actually pushing it up or down or whichever direction. So I'll draw that in two different colors. So we would do break this up basically by turning um, it into a triangle. So you think about this overall vector as being the hypotenuse of the triangle and then our components are perpendicular to each other always because they're independent from each other and so we need a right angle in our triangle somewhere so this one would be that would be my fx so the horizontal component to that force and then we have fy the vertical component so when they talk about breaking a vector, whether it's a force vector or velocity vector into its components, we're just making a triangle and showing the amount of that force that acts horizontally and the amount of force that acts vertically or velocity. Okay, one more thing that I just want to cover is like, why, why does this happen? So getting to the reasoning a little bit. Um, the reasoning is really connected to this first point that any object upon which the only force is acting is the gravitational force is considered a projectile. So why do these two balls hit the ground at the exact same time? They hit the ground at the exact same time because the only thing that determines the amount of time that takes them to hit the ground is their vertical distance above the ground and how fast or how quickly they accelerate towards the ground. And so the only thing that matters here is their vertical forces. And so this one, we see that vertically the dropped ball accelerates to the ground. If it's accelerating, if its velocity is changing, then there has to be a force acting, an unbalanced force acting on that object. And of course, that unbalanced force is the gravitational force acting straight downwards. Also, I should have mentioned that these two balls are the exact same mass, although it wouldn't necessarily matter because the mass and the inertia would be, or sorry, the force and the inertia would be proportional. So maybe ignore that I just said that. Okay, so we have a vertical force acting on this one. If I want to think about the forces that are acting on this launched ball while it's in motion as a projectile, the force diagram for the launch ball would look identical to the dropped ball. I know that a lot of you might want to include a force that's acting horizontally because you see that it has a horizontal velocity here. However, remember that as long as the velocity isn't changing, there can be no horizontal forces acting on an object and it will maintain that velocity, right? This is getting back to Newton's first law, which is that an object in motion continues in motion at a constant speed unless there is an unbalanced force. So it's, if this ball already had a velocity and then there's no forces acting on it, it will just continue that velocity forever until there's another force, i.e. the ground that acts on it. So the fact that this thing is moving already doesn't mean anything for the force diagram except to know that there's no horizontal forces acting on it that speed it up or slow it down. So it just maintains that speed. I will note that in all of this we're considering air resistance negligible. So there is probably some air resistance, but I'll tell you I've done this demonstration in my classroom many times and it, they hit the ground at the exact same time regardless. So even with air resistance, they still would hit the ground at the exact same time because that air resistance, as long as they're the same shape, is really still just affecting the horizontal. So this might get a little bit slower, but they would still hit the ground at the same time. And then they'd have the same air resistance moving vertically. But for the sake of our force diagrams, we'll just neglect any air resistance. And that means that we'll see 
that the speed doesn't change in the horizontal direction. All right, feel free to reach out your teachers if you have any other questions. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone for all of the work that you put into this class, both when we were in school and since we've been out of school. Um, it's really wonderful as a teacher to be receiving, you know, your work back and seeing that you are learning throughout this time. Um, and I want everyone to have a wonderful summer, and hopefully we all get to see you guys in the fall. Okay, bye!